Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video. Now it's been a while since we've done this and we are in a new meta so it is time to bring the video back. We are going with the top 10 brawlers in the new meta. Now this meta is totally different than the last one. Before we saw a B, Brock and Carl meta with some other really good brawlers but this is totally different. Everything has changed so we're going to dive into the top 10. Show you guys the top 10, talk about what they're good at, what they're bad at, what modes they're good at, what modes they're bad at, etc. So let's hop into the games and let's show you guys what the top 10 is. Okay, so coming in at number 10, we have Jackie. Now, Jackie used to be a really meta brawler and it kind of fell off when a lot of the tank destroyers such as Colette, Spike, B, etc. found its way into the meta. But Jackie is starting to make her way back. Now, Jackie is really good against the current meta because a lot of the top brawlers that are really, really good I'll get three shot by Jackie. With Jackie's new old star power that was really bad getting a buff, it's become actually very viable, better than the other star power, and it's probably the best tank in the game right now. Now Jackie's gadget, obviously the speed is really good. The super is kind of what lacks for Jackie. It's not really that great. It doesn't do too much, but Jackie as a brawler is really good and you can easily catch other players slipping, catch them out of position, etc. But anyways, the modes I would play it in, Brawl Ball, it's even good in some gem grab maps. I would definitely not play it in Heist. It's really good in Siege, pretty good in Hot Zone, so I would definitely recommend playing it there. But Jackie is pretty well-rounded, just kind of avoid Bounty uh, for the most part. Some maps she's good in, and avoid Heist, and you should be really good with your wins on Jackie. So coming in at number 9, we have Pam. Now, I really wanted to move Pam up higher on this list, and it's the reason... Okay. So coming in at number 9, we have Pam, and I really wanted to move Pam up higher on this list because Pam is really, really good and very well-rounded, can do a lot of things and is very hard to take out. But unfortunately, unlike the other brawlers, and I feel like I say this a lot with Pam, she's really well-rounded but isn't very, very, very good in something. What I mean by this is that she doesn't just absolutely dominate anything. She's kind of just like the second or third best option in a lot of different scenarios. Don't mind the super that you guys are about to see. I did not know I would be past the present. Um, but yeah, Pam is really well-rounded, really strong. You can play her in literally every single mode, almost every single map, and it'll work out. Very strong in 3v3s. Um, solo and duo, I don't really want to talk about too much in this video, but yeah. Pam is a really big force to be reckoned with. Really good at holding down mid, really good in overtime in any type of mode. Does good DPS, has a lot of health. There's basically unlimited things to talk about Pam. The reason she moved up the meta is both her star powers got a buff. Her gadget is really good already when it comes to staying alive. Her turret now doing 800 damage per second is a lot. That's really good for helping finish kills and locking down areas. And the additional health per second, for, or not health per second, health per shot for her other star power is also really good. This is going to give Pam the number 9 slot and move up our list in this meta. All right, so coming in at number eight, we have 8-Bit. No pun intended, 8-Bit is just a super strong brawler. Now, when I talked about overtime with Pam and how Pam is really good in overtime, the best brawler for overtime is 8-Bit. When 8-Bit got that new second star power where instead of extra life, which was broken in Showdown, yes, 8-Bit got speed. This was kind of mind-blowing to a lot of the tops as 8-Bit's only downfall was the fact that it didn't have any speed. But now that 8-Bit has normal speed when in the turret, and this turret range is very big with this star power, it is an overpowered brawler. And then he got a buff to get from 30 additional ex percent extra damage to 50 percent additional damage. And that is a lot of damage. Now the other gadget is also really good. I personally normally use like the teleport gadget where you teleport back to your uh, turret, but the one that gives extra shots, I'm pretty sure it gives double the clips or even triple the clips, absolutely lasers, safes, and ikes, robots, stuff like that. So I'd highly recommend using it in Heist and Siege. Apid is one of the best Heist and Siege brawlers, 100%. Really strong in some gems, some bounty. It is really well-rounded and Apid I would just recommend using it everywhere. It is a very good brawler. Now coming in at number seven, we have Colette. Now, when I originally saw the Brawl Stars balance changes, I thought Colette was gonna be a lot higher on the list. I thought Colette was basically a lock for top three, but the current meta is not really one that's made for Colette. Now Colette's probably maybe one of the strongest brawlers when it just comes to the actual kit and how it does against all 43 brawlers, but what it does against the meta is not super exciting. Now, a brawler can be good, but what decides where it is in the meta is totally impacted by the other brawlers atop the meta. Now, a lot of the other brawlers are a little bit squishier, don't have a ton of HP, not very tanky. Obviously, Colette excels against tanks, 
So for that reason alone, Colette's going to be lower. If tanks were the meta, Colette would likely be the number one brawler in the game. But just because it's a little bit of a squishier meta, Colette is going to be number seven. Now, Colette is really strong in modes like Heist and Brawl Ball. Even Siege Colette can be pretty good. Bounty, not so much. I wouldn't recommend. Gem Grab, it's also a really good lane. Colette is a well-rounded brawler, just like a lot of the brawlers that we put on this list. Very good at multiple different things. But its main thing is obviously taking out tanks. Now, for what star power to use... Both of them are pretty good. The knockback is good. I like it in Siege and in Heist when I try and hit players and the Ike or safe at the same time. But the shield is also really good and really strong. The additional buff to the shield has helped a lot. I would have never used it before, but now I'm really liking it a lot, to be honest. So I really don't have, you know, a guaranteed star power, which is better than the other. I think it's totally preference. Don't mind this trick shot. Uh, but anyways, that is going to be number seven, I believe. That is going to be Colette. Let's move on to the next brawler. So coming in at number six, we have Lou. Now, obviously I'm gonna be showing you guys some siege defense gameplay because what else would we show you guys with Lou? Lou is definitely the best defender right now. Pretty close with Spike, but I'm gonna give Lou the slight edge. Every single map, there seems to be a way to just trap that bot and just get it completely stuck with Lou. And as you guys can see, they had like a 10 bot or 11 bot. I don't know what it was. And they did 2% damage, even with wall break and everything. Lou is super strong and it's fairly well-rounded. It's decent in gem, although I don't think it's top 10 in gem. It's somewhere around 11 or 12. One of the best siege brawlers for sure. And, you know, since it's so good in defense, you would think it's not that good at attacking or the mid game, but it's actually really strong at that too. I would say Lou is a top three siege brawler it's also really good in brawl ball for area denial and a top three hot zone brawler as well so lou is really well rounded unfortunately the gadget isn't the strongest in the world now although it's kind of useful it's not super strong like a lot of the other brawlers that are going to be atop the list the gadget is usually what carries them same with last meta with b collect or sorry b carl and brock but Lou is still a very strong brawler and is going to take our number six spot. Now coming in at number five and slowly creeping its way right back up the meta is going to be Max. Now Max took a little bit of a fall down the meta when Carl, Brock, and B were the meta in Brawl Stars just because, you know, they're not really that favorable of a matchup for Max. But with the range meta coming out and Max being really good at getting close to brawlers, having that speed, having that dash, and giving that speed to range brawlers, Max is slowly but surely making its way right back into the meta. It's really good in basically every single mode. Again, all of these brawlers are really well-rounded, not just good in one singular mode. Max obviously is really, really good in Siege and in Brawl Ball, but it also shines in Gem. It does really well in Hot Zone on some maps. It's just really good basically all around. I kind of just dive in and die because I'm trying to do as much damage as possible. But Max is really good. Now, both gadgets are very strong. I personally like the first one, the dash. A lot of the pros like the dash, but I've seen people use the second one and I wouldn't suggest not using it. I would just say try using the first star or the first gadget. And again, both star powers are really good, but I would use the second star power instead of the first one just because I believe it is a little bit better. But it is pretty situational based. But yeah, that's going to be the number five brawler. This is going to start off our top five. It is really strong, really good in a lot of the modes and doesn't really have a downfall. But that's going to be it for number five. So let's hop into the top four. So coming in at number four, we have Mr. P. Now, Mr. P is kind of on a tier on its own where there is an easy three top brawlers in the game that are just above and beyond the rest. And then we have the rest of the 10, but above those like kind of 10 is Mr. P just above and beyond. No one can say that Mr. P isn't this number four spot. It has to be number four because it's just way better than every other brawler, but it's here below those top three. Mr. P, again, just like the other brawlers, good in every mode. The gadget, a little bit weak, but if used properly, can be pretty decent in wasting the other team's shots. And both star powers are interchangeable. So if you want to have kind of an easy ride, you can use that first star power. It's not too difficult to use. Or you can go with the second star power if you feel like you're a really good Mr. P, Cough, Cough, Kangarmo. And kind of just want to dominate a lane with those porters spawning like once every literally second after they die. Mr. P is a really strong brawler. Really annoying to face as well. That's pretty good against the current meta, so I would definitely recommend using it. Uh, but yeah, good in every single mode, except for Heist and Siege, I would say, although it's definitely still usable in Siege and perhaps even Heist. But really well-rounded brawler, really good brawler. Would highly recommend using if you guys want to push and you don't have a specific mode you guys want to push in. 
But with that being said, let's hop into our top three. Now, before we get into our top three, I just want to show you guys a screenshot from my Twitter. Shameless plug. Go follow my Twitter. Link is in the description below. These three brawlers are easily above and beyond the rest, but everyone seems to have a different opinion. It is really close, and for the first time in a while, I think nobody really truly knows what the best brawler in the game is. Now, I made a recent video, Byron versus Edgar, of who I thought was going to be the best brawler in the game, but as time went on a little bit, it was clear that Colt was actually still part of that top three and arguably top one. Now, this is totally opinion-based. What I'm saying is not... 100% facts. It is totally what I think, although I have a pretty pretty good opinion and pretty good understanding of what's good. So we're going to hop into the top three. We're going to talk about what I think is three, two, and one. Let me know if you guys agree in the comment section below. Let's hop into it and see what's up. So coming in at number three, we have Edgar. Now, Edgar is a really strong brawler and probably out of all three of the brawlers has the most peak crazy performance or crazy plays that you're going to see out of all of them. With Edgar, there are some brawlers, you jump on them and you get an automatic kill. No matter what happens, if you're jumping on one of those brawlers, you are getting a kill. And that is what makes Edgar so strong. Now, the damage it does is obviously ridiculous. The range, really bad. The gadget, really good. Star power is decent. Now, why is Edgar 3 instead of 2 or 1? I think it's 3 because it's not as well-rounded as the other two. Yes, it has its moments but I wouldn't say it's as well-rounded and as easy to use as the other brawlers. And when I say easy to use, I don't just mean hitting a button and, and hitting those shots. I mean, some brawlers you get outplayed by, some brawlers get countered by Edgar, but there are a lot of brawlers that also counter Edgar, and that is why it's not super easy to use. The other two brawlers, in any situation, you can find a way to win, there is no situation, no brawler where you can't find a way to win your matchup. But with Edgar, sometimes you just get hard countered and there's nothing you can do. Also, if a game takes more than two minutes or a minute and you run out of gadgets, Edgar becomes pretty bad when you're facing some range and they're not letting you get near them. There's some good players and you just can't charge your super. Edgar is literally useless. It has the shortest range in the game. It cannot reach anything, cannot sneak up on anything unless the people you're facing are total legitimate bots. And it's just not that strong unless you're going up against people that don't really know what they're doing or if you don't have any gadgets. So that's why I'm going to leave it at number three. Again, some people think it's the best brawler in the game. Some people think it's at least top two. I'm going to leave it at three. We're going to talk about top two and why they're top two. So let's get into it and let's show you guys what's up. So coming in at number two, we have Colt. Now, Colt is an extremely strong brawler in this meta. It is so ridiculously good. And there's a lot of reasons why. So the gadget, first off, is broken. I made a tier list not too long ago that I posted on my Twitter, didn't make it for any YouTube content, was just curious as to what I can do with the tier list, and I really underrated Colt. The new gadget came out, Colt didn't get the original buffs, but the new gadget was enough for me to rank it way higher than what I put it originally. The super is obviously really good, Colt's really good, it's just clips on clips on clips. If you're hitting your shots, it is just so much damage, but the Colt, gadget and the star power to the to slick boots is really what does the trick to colt so colt already had really high performance value i don't know if any of you guys have seen johnny boy play colt but when johnny boy is hitting his shots everyone dies very fast and basically everyone is johnny boy right now with slick boots you can basically just auto aim in full clip with your regular shot and the super additionally the gadget is not that hard to click to hit you can literally go one tile away from someone click the green button then click the red button and it is an automatic 3000 damage it is extremely strong i would highly recommend pushing colt everywhere it is very strong literally everywhere but Colt is just super strong. If you guys ever want to push Colt or have fun doing it, I would suggest doing it right now. Does not have a weakness. Both star powers are good. Both gadgets are good. Although the second one is definitely broken. Would highly recommend using it. But let's hop into number one and talk about why that brawler is number one and why Colt is number two. And coming in at number one, we have Siege Mortis. Okay, it's not going to be number one. I'm just kidding. But Mortis should definitely be on this top 10 list. There's basically 11 or 12 really good brawlers. And although I wanted to put Mortis in so badly, and it is actually a very strong brawler in this meta since there are 11 or 12 brawlers that are just so much better than the other 30, I just couldn't find a reason to leave any of the other 10 brawlers off the list. So Mortis isn't going to make it, but just remember Siege Mortis is always going to be the number one brawler in our hearts. So coming in at number one, we have Byron. Now, a lot of people might disagree. There's a huge debate when, when the brawlers came out, what's better, Byron or Edgar? And when it originally came out, a lot of people did polls 
Now he's usually about 65% for Edgar and 35% for Byron. But if you see Byron gameplay and really good Byron gameplay, you're gonna notice that this brawler does not die and your teammates do not die. It is so good for holding control, for healing your teammates. It two shots a ton of brawlers that you don't really realize it two shots. And it is just so ridiculously strong. Now I can be a mid here perfectly fine. I can totally switch over to lane perfectly fine. I can go and take some shots because I have a really good gadget. My teammates can go and take shots. I have the super which can do damage or can do heals. It is so good because it has plays for every single situation. And it is just so strong. Now a lot of the pros think Byron is better than Edgar and a lot of more of the casual players think Edgar is better. And that makes sense since Edgar does have more flashy moments. But as you guys can see, I got hit by two sprout shots right there. And I walk up a second later with full health as if nothing happens. I do miss that super, but that should have been an easy kill on the sprout. This brawler is just so good. It's unbelievably good. There's nothing that hard counters it. And the reason why this is one instead of Colt is because Edgar does counter, or sorry, not Edgar, Byron does counter Colt and it does so pretty easily. It has the range on it. It's pretty easy, easy to chip and just do damage. And it's just so difficult to beat and actually take down a good Edgar. Good in every single mode, every single position. It's not that strong against double tank. That's really its only weakness but Edgar is easily, in my opinion, the best brawler in the game. But that's gonna end today. I hope you guys enjoyed this YouTube video. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you guys wanna see in the future. But that is going to be it for me today. I will catch you guys again tomorrow. Peace.